the theme of our hearts. The, the words that keep coming to me are, it's all about the heart. It's all about the heart. And so then I also went back to my notes from, I don't know, when I even started this a year and a half, maybe two summers ago now, um, asking him what was next for those who had finished all three brides classes. And so I was reading over that last night. And one of the things that I had heard in my prayer, and I was at, at the monastery, I remember I was at the monastery praying about all of this, um, the Christ the Bridegroom Monastery in their chapel. And one of the things that I heard was that um, what's most important first is that we hear his song again and again, because he knows that first we're going to listen to it um, just with our minds, but he wants it to sink into our hearts. And so the prayer that he gave me is very simple. Remember the story when he touched the man's ears and he said, be open. So that's his prayer for us. This is what he's saying to each one of us. Imagine that he's putting his hands, not just on your physical ears, but on the ears of your heart and saying, be open, be open to the sound of the voice of the bridegroom, be open to truly listening with the heart to my song of all songs. Let me sing over you. We spend a lot of time listening with our ears and our minds and trying to understand. And that's good. But what's most important is that we understand with the heart, that we let it sink deeply into the heart. And so I want to start by reading the song to you because we haven't done that in a while. And so I want everyone just to, in your own words, in your own way, just take a moment, close your eyes if you're comfortable with that, maybe put your hands on your heart and just ask Mother Mary to help you to open your heart, open any doors in your heart that may have been closed to the voice of the bridegroom to his song of love, whatever your resistances might be, wherever they might come from, whatever wounds, whatever lies, ask Mother Mary to tenderly touch those places and help you to open those doors so that your heart can truly be open to hearing his song. The Song of Solomon. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Oh, that you would kiss me with the kisses of your mouth, for your love is better than wine. Your anointing oils are fragrant. Your name is an oil poured out. Therefore, the maidens love you. Draw me after you. Let us make haste. The king has brought me into his chambers. We will exalt and rejoice in you. We will extol your love more than wine. Rightly do they love you. I am very dark but comely, O daughters of Jerusalem. Like the tents of Kader, like the curtains of Solomon. Do not gaze at me because I am swarthy, because the sun has scorched me. My mother's sons were angry with me. They made me keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard I have not kept. Tell me, you whom my soul loves, where you pas pasture your flock, where you make it lie down at noon. For why should I be like one who wanders beside the flocks of your companions? If you do not know, O fairest among women, follow in the tracks of the flock and pasture your kids beside the shepherd's tents. I compare you, my love, to a mare of Pharaoh's chariots. Your cheeks are comely with ornaments, your neck with strings of jewels. 
We will make you ornaments of gold studded with silver. While the king was on his couch, my nard gave forth its fragrance. My beloved is to me a bag of myrrh that lies between my breast. My beloved is to me a cluster of henna blossoms in the vineyards of Engedi. Behold, you are beautiful, my love. Behold, you are beautiful. Your eyes are doves. Behold, you are beautiful, my beloved. Truly lovely. Our couch is green. The beams of our house are cedar. Our rafters are pine. I am a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. As a lily among brambles, so is my love among maidens. As an apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among young men. With great delight, I sat in his shadow and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house and his banner over me was love. Sustain me with raisins, refresh me with apples, for I am sick with love. Oh, that his left hand were under my head and that his right hand embraced me. I adjure you, O oh daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or the hinds of the field, that you stir not up nor awaken love until it please. The voice of my beloved, Behold, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Behold, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom, they give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. O oh, my dove in the clefts of the rock, in the covert of the cliff, let me see your face, let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is comely. Catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vineyards, for our vineyards are in blossom. My beloved is mine and I am his. He pastures his flock among the lilies. Until the day breathes and the shadows flee, turn, my beloved, be like a gazelle or a young stag upon rugged mountains. Upon my bed by night, I sought him whom my soul loves. I sought him, but found him not. I called him, but he gave no answer. I will rise now and go about the city, in the streets and in the squares. I will seek him whom my soul loves. I sought him, but found him not. The watchmen found me as they went about in the city. Have you seen him whom my soul loves? Scarcely had I passed them when I found him whom my soul loves. I held him and would not let him go until I had brought him into my mother's house and into the chamber of her that conceived me. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or the hinds of the field, that you stir not up nor awaken love until it please. What is that 
coming up from the wilderness like a column of smoke, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all the fragrant powders of the merchant. Behold, it is the litter of Solomon. About it are sixty mighty men of the mighty men of Israel, all girt with swords and expert in war, each with his sword at his thigh against alarms by night. King Solomon made himself a palaquin from the wood of Lebanon. He made its post of silver, its back of gold, its seat of purple. It was lovingly wrought within by the daughters of Jerusalem. Go forth, O daughters of Zion, and behold King Solomon with the crown with which his mother crowned him on the day of his wedding, on the day of the gladness of his heart. Behold, you are beautiful, my love. Behold, you are beautiful. Your eyes are doves behind your veil. Your hair is like a flock of goats moving down the slopes of Gilead. Your teeth are like a flock of shorn ewes that have come up from the washing, all of which bear twins, and not one among them is bereaved. Your lips are like a scarlet thread, and your mouth is lovely. Your cheeks are like halves of a pomegranate behind your veil. Your neck is like the Tower of David, built for an arsenal, whereon hang a thousand bucklers, all of them shields of warriors. Your two breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle that feed among the lilies. Until the day breathes and the shadows flee, I will hie me to the mountain of myrrh and the hill of frankincense. You are all fair, my love. There is no flaw in you. Come with me from Lebanon, my bride. Come with me from Lebanon. Depart from the peak of Amana, from the peak of Siner and Hermon, from the dens of lions, from the mountains of leopards. You have ravished my heart, my sister, my bride. You have ravished my heart with a glance of your eyes, with one jewel of your necklace. How sweet is your love, my sister, my bride. How much better is your love than wine and the fragrance of your oils than any spice. Your lips distill nectar, my bride. Honey and milk are under your tongue. The scent of your garments is like the scent of Lebanon. A garden locked is my sister, my bride. A garden locked, a fountain sealed. Your shoots are an orchard of pomegranate trees with all choicest fruits, henna with nard, nard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon, with all trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes, with all chief spices. A garden fountain, a well of living water, and flowing streams from Lebanon. Awake, O north wind, and come, O south wind. Blow upon my garden. Let its fragrance be wafted abroad. Let my beloved come to his garden and eat its choicest fruits. I come to my garden, my sister, my bride. I gather my myrrh with my spice. I eat my honeycomb with my honey. I drink my wine with my milk. Eat, O oh friends, and drink. Drink deeply, O oh lovers. I slept, 
but my heart was awake. Hark, my beloved is knocking. Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my perfect one. For my head is wet with dew, my locks with the drops of the night. I had put off my garment. How could I put it on? I had bathed my feet. How could I soil them? My beloved put his hand to the latch, and my heart was thrilled within me. I arose to open to my beloved, and my hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with liquid myrrh upon the handles of the bolt. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had turned and gone. My soul failed me when he spoke. I sought him, but found him not. I called him, but he gave no answer. The watchmen found me as they went about in the city. They beat me. They wounded me. They took away my mantle, those watchmen of the walls. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him, I am sick with love. What is your beloved more than another beloved, O fairest among women? What is your beloved more than another beloved that you thus adjure us? My beloved is all radiant and ruddy, distinguished among 10,000. His head is the finest gold. His locks are wavy, black as a raven. His eyes are like doves beside springs of water, bathed in milk, fitly set. His cheeks are like beds of spices yielding fragrance. His lips are lilies distilling liquid myrrh. His arms are rounded gold set with jewels. His body is ivory work encrusted with sapphires. His legs are alabaster columns set upon bases of gold. His appearance is like Lebanon, choice as the cedars. His speech is most sweet, and he is altogether desirable. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Whither has your beloved gone, O fairest among women? Whither has your beloved turned that we may seek him with you? My beloved has gone down to his garden, to the beds of spices, to pasture his flock in the gardens and to gather lilies. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. He pastures his flock among the lilies. You are beautiful as Terzah, my love, comely as Jerusalem, terrible as an army with banners. Turn away your eyes from me, for they disturb me. Your hair is like a flock of goats moving down the slopes of Gilead. Your teeth are like a flock of ewes that have come up from the washing. All of them bear twins. Not one among them is bereaved. Your cheeks are like halves of a pomegranate behind your veil. There are 60 queens and 80 concubines and maidens without number. My dove 
my perfect one is only one the darling of her mother flawless to her that bore her the maiden saw her and called her happy the queens and concubines also and they praised her who is this that looks forth like the dawn fair as the moon bright as the sun terrible as an army with banners I went down to the nut orchard to look at the blossoms of the valley, to see whether the vines had budded, whether the pomegranates were in bloom. Before I was aware, my fancy set me in a chariot beside my prince. Return, return, O Sholomite, return, return, that you may that we may look upon you. Why should you look upon the Sholomite as upon a dance before two armies? How graceful are your feet in sandals, O queenly maiden! Your rounded thighs are like jewels, the work of a master hand. Your navel is a rounded bowl that never lacks mixed wine. Your belly is a heap of wheat encircled with lilies. Your two breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle. Your neck is like an ivory tower. Your eyes are pools in Heshbon by the gate of Bath Robin. Your nose is like a tower of Lebanon overlooking Damascus. Your head crowns you like Carmel and your flowing locks are like purple. A king is held captive in your tresses. How fair and pleasant you are, O oh loved one, delectable maiden. You are stately as a palm tree, and your breasts are like its clusters. I say I will climb the palm tree and lay hold of its branches. O oh, may your breasts be like clusters of the vine, and the scent of your breath like apples and your kisses like the best wine that goes down smoothly gliding over lips and teeth i am my beloved's and his desire is for me come my beloved let us go forth into the fields and lodge in the villages. Let us go out early to the vineyards and see whether the vines have budded, whether the grape blossoms have opened and the pomegranates are in bloom. There, I will give you my love. The mandrakes give forth fragrance and over our doors are all choice fruits, new, as well as old, which I have laid up for you, O oh my beloved. Oh, that you were like a brother to me, that nursed at my mother's breast. If I met you outside, I would kiss you, and none would despise me. I would lead you and bring you into the house of my mother, and into the chamber of her that conceived me. I would give you spiced wine to drink, the juice of my pomegranates. Oh, that his left hand were under my head and that his right hand embraced me. I adjure you, O oh daughters of Jerusalem, that you stir not up nor awaken love until it please. Who is that coming up from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? Under the apple tree, I awakened you. There, your mother was in travail with you. There, she who bore you was in travail. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. 
Its flashes are flashes of fire, a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love. Neither can floods drown it. If a man offered for love all the wealth of his house, it would be utterly scorned. We have a little sister, and she has no breast. What shall we do for our sister on the day when she is spoken for? If she is a wall, we will build upon her a battlement of silver. But if she is a door, we will enclose her with the boards of cedar. I was a wall, and my breasts were like towers. Then I was in his eyes as one who brings peace. Solomon had a vineyard at Balhama. He let out the vineyard to keepers. Each one was to bring for its fruit a thousand pieces of silver. My vineyard, my very own, is for myself. You, O Solomon, may have the thousand, and the keepers of the fruit two hundred. O you who dwell in the gardens, my companions are listening for your voice. Let me hear it. Make haste, my beloved, and be like a gazelle or a young stag upon the mountains of spices. Amen. As I was just praying with all of this again uh, last night, I was thinking about my own experience with coming to know the bridegroom through the Song of Songs. I was thinking about um, the creation of Brides 1, 2, and 3, um, all the um, conversations I've now had with others about how the bridegroom is speaking to them through the song. And then all of the academic articles and books and early church fathers and saints who I've read about the Song of Songs. And one thing that I really zeroed in on, again, was this whole idea that it's all about the heart. And how this all also connected with the messages that we received when we were just in Guadalupe. And so I know we don't have a lot of time left today, but I just want to give you some thoughts to take in the, to your prayer in the next week and also a little bit of reading to do. So one of the um, topics that scholars write articles about when they look at the Song of Songs and that they debate is, is this, is there any chronology? Is there really a plot or a story here? What is the setting? What's going on? Like, you know, if we wanted to put this in a genre or figure out who are the main characters, if we wanted to look at it through that literary lens, what do we have here? And so I've read a lot of different arguments and all of that, but what keeps coming back to me is that the setting is your heart. That this is what is happening in our hearts. That's where this is all taking place. And so I invite you to read again the song during this week. And think of it in that way. How has this drama, this dialogue, this love song, how is the Lord, the bridegroom, reenacting it, recreating it, living it with me in the depths of my heart? And then I also invite you to read the catechism's definition and description of what is the heart. Like if we're going to talk about it's all about the heart, we got to all be on the same page as to what we're talking about. 
right? What do we mean when we say the heart? And so that is at the beginning of part four of your catechism, the part on Christian prayer. And so I'll just end by giving you this little bit to think about and ponder. So we're going to, we're going to do a lot of, this was another message in Guadalupe was very strong. Mary kept saying, teach them to ponder in their hearts, to be silent, to be still and to ponder. And so you can take this to ponder in your hearts today and to keep in mind, like let this sink in deeply as we come back again next week and talk some more about how is the song of songs? How is he asking us to hear it with our hearts, to be open to its healing, to be open to the love that he's expressing to us through it in our hearts? So the catechism says, according to scripture, it is the heart that prays. If our heart is, fair, is far from God, the words of prayer are in vain. The heart is the dwelling place where I am, where I live. The heart is the place to which I withdraw. The heart is our hidden center beyond the grasp of our reason and of others. Only the spirit of God can fathom the human heart and know it fully. The heart is the place of decision deeper than our psychic drives. It is the place of truth where we choose life or death. It is the place of encounter because as an image of God, we live in relation. It is the place of covenant. So think about this definition, this meaning of what is your heart, and then reread the song. And think of your heart as the setting where this dialogue, this drama is taking place. You are the bride and Jesus is the bridegroom.